Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I am glad to be here at such a great conference and lovely Budapest. And well, my name is oh, it's a platter, yeah. My name is Onur Bashkurt and I am working as software manager at CareerNet and also Ishin Olsun. CareerNet is online employment and recruitment market leader in Turkey since 1999 and Ishin Olsun is our brand new product which dominates blue color segment in uh, online recruitment market. And also I am co-owner and principal author of SWTestAcademy.com and we are generally sharing articles on test automation, performance testing, security testing, DevOps practices, continuous integration and so on. You can join our newsletter and stay tuned with the latest news and articles. And also I work several local and global companies such as Ericsson, Huawei and so on. And today's outline. First, I will explain what is visual test automation. Then I will go on with uh, why should we do visual testing? Why should we automate this process? Then what are the common challenges of visual test automation? And we will, after that I will introduce you some tools. Um, and at the end of my presentation I will give some takeaways and tips. And if you have any questions I will try to answer them. And first, what is visual test automation? It's a test automation activity which verifies the graphical user interface is displayed as expected to the end user. When we are doing UI test automation by using for example Selenium or Capybara and, or another tool, we are interrogating web elements. Then we are manipulating them and we add some assertion points to check functionality. We are focusing functionality. But in visual testing we are focusing the visuals such as colors, shapes, location of elements and so on. And why should we do visual testing? First of all, UI must appear correctly to the end user because the users interact with our system by its UI. And if there's a problem on the UI, they cannot interact with the system properly. So all, ki all kind of animations, transitions should work flawlessly. And web elements, locations, sizes, colors should appear as expected. Also, the visual defects are easily recognized by the users because they are on UI. And if there is a problem on the UI, they can, some of the users may take a screenshot and put that screenshot on social media and they may have fun with that problem. Actually, it's a nightmare for a test team. Also, it hurts the company brand, brand very negatively. And also, if you provide some core products such as WordPress template or mobile application, uh, generation engine, you have to do visual testing because your customers use your core product to build their product. And if you pro provide a visual defect in your core product, they will output the same visual defects. So it's so critical to do visual testing for that kind of products. And as you know, mobile application release process is slower than the web applications because of uh, iOS and Android approval process. So if there's a problem on your mobile applications, you and your customer will live with that bug much longer than web applications. So we have to do visual testing for mobile applications. And why should we automate this process? First of all, variety of test environments. We are doing test activities for several browsers, mobile devices, resolutions and so on. If we multiply these variables, we will get huge environment diversity. And if we want to do the same test for in each environment, actually this is not easy to uh, do, do it in a short period of time. So we have to automate this process, reduce the test execution time and cover the test environments as much as possible. Also we are in agile world and release cycles are getting shorter and shorter. And in each release cycle, we are doing several software testing activities such as user store testing, exploratory testing, UI testing, UI test automation, API automation and performance testing, a lot of things. If we add visual testing in that cycle, we, it is better to automate this process because we don't have enough time. And if we do the visual test in each cycle, again and again, again and again, again and again, it's getting a very boring and cumbersome process and humanize our error prone. After a while we cannot detect the problems very easily. Because of these reasons, 
This is better to automate this process, this visual, this software testing activity as much as possible. And what are the challenges of visual test automation? The first one is anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing makes the edges of images much smoother and nicer. Nicer. Actually, it reduces the jagged sharp edges and enhances the uh, image quality. And if you do visual testing for m one, for more than one machine, you have to uh, configure your tool. For example, you have to add some error percentage to eliminate this kind of problems. Because if you do not do this kind of uh, configuration, you will get some mismatches because you are doing pixel by pixel comparison. The second one is dynamic content. If you do screenshot based image uh, visual testing, visual test automation, first you have to take a screenshot and save as a baseline image. And second and more run, you will take the same screenshots and compare with your baseline images. But if you have a dynamic content in your web application or mobile applications, each time you will get different results. And if you compare the different results each other, you will get mismatches. So you have to hide those dynamic contents or remove them or you have to stop then take a screenshot to eliminate dynamic content problems. The second one is moving element problems such as auto kerning or in other words dynamic letter movements or offsets. For example if you add only one pixel to your web element it moves only one pixel left to the right or right to the left. Actually it is not a so negligible problem it is a very minor problem. So again as I told you you have to configure your test automation visual test automation tool to eliminate this kind of mismatches. I will go on with the tools. Actually as you see here there are a lot of visual test automation tools in the market. In this session it is not possible to explain the whole of them. So I will go on with the well known ones. The first one is Apple tool size. Who knows Apple tool size? All right. Uh, it's a commercial tool actually and automated visual testing tool for web applications and also mobile applications. And it finds the visual differences with some match levels. I will explain what these match levels are. And if you have a, a Selenium or Appium based uh, visual test automation framework, uh, you can easily integrate this tool by using ICE SDK. Also, I will show how to integrate ICE SDK to your test frameworks and also it has a very cloud based uh, and clean informative dashboards. So how does it work? F uh, at first run Apple yeah, size takes the screenshots and save them as a baseline reference images. And second and more run it takes the again the same images and compare with your baseline image. If there is an if there is not a problem or mismatch your test pass. If there is a problem, Apple Tools I automatically highlights it and your test failed. So I will go on match levels. The exact means pixel by pixel comparison. Generally we are not using exact so much because it's so error prone. So we generally prefer to use strict match level. It mimics the human eyes and it uh, ignores the some challenges that I described you in two minutes ago. For example, anti-lighting, small pixel movements and so on. And content is very similar to stick. It also ignores the color changes. And if you want to test the layout of your elements, uh, layout of your website or location of your elements, you should use layout match level. And ICE SDK. How can we integrate ICE SDK with our Selenium or Appium based project? It is so easy. It's like a human eyes. Uh, because we have to create an eyes and we have to open it by using ice.open method and if we want to check a window we just use ice.check window method and at the end of our test code we should use ice.close and close our eyes. And this is the uh, one of the example of Apple Tools execution. Also you can find this example on SW Test Academy or codes and details. This is the first run Apple Tools I save the baseline images. And this is the passing scenario. Aptitude's eyes compare the images and there is no differences. Everything goes well and everything is green right now. And this is the failing 
result, failing scenario. Apple tools eyes automatically mismatch, uh, highlight the mismatches, and our test is red right now because it's failed. And the Apple tools eyes dashboard, uh, you can do a bunch of stuff with this dashboard. It's so informative actually. It's very handy dashboard. You can change match level or you can show baseline image and the actual image side by side, highlight differences and do a lot of things with this dashboard. It's very handy. The second tool is Galen framework. Who knows Galen? Oh, only one. Okay. Galen framework is written by Ivan Shuvin and it's the automated layout and responsive testing framework. You can test your layout with by using Galen framework, the location of your elements. And it runs with Selenium grid and you can do parallel testing by using Galen framework. It has also sub, uh, support, it supports also Java, Selenium web driver, uh, TestNG and JUnit. I will go on with an example again and you can find this code and it is also established at Galen.com. Uh, in this example, logo should display 31 pixel below to the header, and header should uh, must be located 0 pixel to the right, left, and top. And our logo should display correctly. You can also do image comparison by using Galen framework, and all navigation links should be horizontally aligned. So how can we do that? We can do this by writing a JSPEG file. So what is JSPEG file? JSPEG file is a Galen specification file. Okay, so how can we write Galen specification file? It is actually not so hard. First, you have to declare web elements by using their CSS and expats. Then, if you want, you can add some text. This is for home page, this is for search page, page or this is for basket page. And also, you can declare this is for desktop by using add on desktop. Or you can use this is for mobile by using add on mobile. After that, you should start to declare your web elements. For example, header is inside the screen, zero pixel to the right, left, and top. Also, you can do image comparison by using some error percentage here. This error percentage helps us to eliminate some minimal problems, such as anti-aliasing and small moving elements problems. And also, if you want to test the alignment of your web elements, you can use some loops, for example, for each loop to test that uh, alignments. And this is the Galen test report. When you run your code, it produces a Galen test report. And when you click that report, you will get the details. And also, it highlights the problem with the red color. And if you click that red color, and we will get the that report, the, that problem details, as you see here. Also, you can see the heat map of your web elements by clicking the heat map link. And also, it has a capab capability to do visual comparison and it automatically highlights the differences. Right now, there's the offset problem at, and uh, Galen framework automatically highlights that problem. And the third solution is, this is also open source solution, Image Magic, Selenium and Ashat combination. So what is image magic? It's open source uh, software suite and you can manipulate images by using image magic. You can edit, convert, resize, compare, rotate, bunch of stuff by using image magic. Also it has uh, uh, several language support. You can use image magic by using Ruby, uh, Python, C sharp, Java, Perl, you can, a lot of uh, languages. Right now I use Java and I am for Java interfaces. What is Ashot? Ashot is a screenshot utility which is developed by Yandex QA team. And you can very easily take screenshot of entire page or web element by using Ashot. And again, I, will, I don't have enough time, so I will just give an insight to you. So I will go on with an example. Also, you can find the example codes and details on establishedacademy.com. In this example, we have to open career net, then we unhide the text area of Uzman photo because it's a dynamic content. Every time this dynamic content is changing. So we have to remove, remove it. We have to hide it. Then we have to hover Uzman. Uzman means specialist, uh, web element. Then wait two seconds to finish CSS animation. After that, we take a screenshot and the first run we should save 
it as a baseline image. And second and more round, we should save it, uh, we should compare the actual image with the uh, baseline image. And if there's a problem, we, our test will fail and we will move that failed result to the differences, global differences folder. And this is the example code I couldn't, uh, it's not possible to explain the whole, all code in this session. I will just give you the insights and I will go with the high level of this code. I will, I hide the dynamic content by using JavaScript executor and I take screenshots by using A shots and I will, I compare the images by using image magic. And this is the first run. At first run, I save the baseline images and put the test folder. This is my baseline image. This is my reference image. And this is my second run. There is no problem. Everything is green and test pass. Arithmetic error is zero. After that, I added some different shapes on baseline image. Then I save it. Then I rerun my test and image magic automatically finds those problems or those images or shapes and highlights that, highlight them and put that pr mm, problematic output to the global differences folder. And as you see, arithmetic error is bigger than zero as you right now in this situation. And takeaways. First of all, the visual testing is not equal to UI testing. As I told you, UI testing focuses functionality, but visual testing focuses the visuals, shapes, locations, colors of elements, and so on. Then you have to be aware of visual testing challenges and you should select the right tool. For example, if you are familiar with JavaScript, you should go on with Phantom CSS. Or if you want to test your layout, you should go with Galen framework. You're, so you have to know these challenges, you have to know what you want to do, then select the right tool. And you, if you do screenshot based visual testing, uh, for me you have to take for each environment browser pair for each test because Firefox and Chrome display the web elements differently. And if you not do, if you don't do this kind of, um, this kind of uh, action, you will get mismatches and problems in your tests. And if you, your test team do not have enough technical knowledge, you may, you may go with uh, commercial products such as Aptitude's Eyes or you have to train your test team uh, and improve their technical skills. And you have to enhance your software development pipeline uh, by using some automated tests such as automated test data generation, API automation, UI automation, visual test automation, mobile automation, automated security and performance testing, and you should use some continuous integration and DevOps practices as much as possible. And this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see the questions. All right. Are there any risk using tolerance values between pictures? Of course there are risk. For example, Apple, for example, Apple says I says uh, own uh, algorithm to do this kind of stuff by using streak match level, but you have to play the uh, this tolerance levels levels. For example, you should add some at first some maybe 5% uh, tolerance, but it's working for you, okay, you will go with it. But uh, for me, it's a risk always. You have to play the tolerance levels as much as possible. How do you see the designers integrate into the automated visual testing process? I think it's a great thing. Uh, designers, I, should, I think they should integrate into the automated visual testing process because if you do that manually, it takes too much time and it's very cumbersome and boring process. Every time you should compare uh, that images side by side, uh, it's not so easy process for me. Any experience on mobile game visual testing? Actually, no, I don't have any experience. But as I know, some companies use Sculix. Who knows Sculix? It's a screenshot-based visual uh, screenshot-based 
UI automation tool actually, it's not a visual test automation tool, but you can combine, combine Skillix with Selenium and also, for example, uh, Apple, uh, Apple tool size, and uh, you may create your own solution. Had you ever experienced any performance restriction while you were automating your visual test cases? Uh, actually, I didn't any experience with uh, performance restrictions, so I can't say anything about that. Yeah. Are the visual testing tools provide opportunities to us comparing images in frequent frequency space? Actually, e as I understand, actually. Actually, I didn't get that question. You want to ask the frequency of, as I understand, that yeah, you can as use, for example, continuous integration and combine, combine with your visual testing tool with CI tool and test it as much as possible. Okay. Do you suggest open source and com commercial tools for visual testing? Uh, for open source tool, if you do layout based testing, lay Galen framework is a very good tool. I should, uh, I am suggesting it. And also for commercial tools, the most major one is app to tool size, uh, as I know and as I practice. I will explain. Also, if you are a JavaScript guy, you should call it Phantom CSS. I should, Phantom CSS is good for JavaScript based visual test automation. Is there any possibility to test dynamic content with visual automatic tests? Uh, I'm testing the dynamic content for some CSS animation uh, and that kind of dynamic content uh, by, by using image magic and wait the that animation finish. I just check the beginning and the end of the dynamic content, not the whole frame. Actually, I don't know how to test it. Maybe you should use some OCR or that kind of tools or image comparison or video comparison tools, but I don't know how to do that. Do you know uh, any tools with yeah, OCR? No, I don't. I, for OCR, yes, I don't any, have any experience. Yeah. Can a baseline image be a prototype image UI? Actually, a baseline is our reference point. Yeah, it's, it may be a prototype. Uh, so each time we should compare that baseline image with the actual image. So this should be our base uh, reference point. Right? 